All right, <clears throat> how's it going, guys? Figured I'd make a uh, part two video to my uh, shop tour video. So today we're gonna go through all my toolboxes and show off some of my favorite tools. Um, so I guess we'll just get started here. We'll start in this small toolbox, or the smallest toolbox. It's the uh, a U.S. General toolbox. Um, this will start up top here. I got my Milwaukee charger for my ratchet. I got a small propane torch. I also have a map gas one, but it's elsewhere. Um, some stickers along the back wall, some stickers for push mowers and stuff that fall off that I glue back on whenever I fix them. Uh, up on, hanging up on the top here, we have, uh, some clamps and stuff that I keep. Uh, this is my portable jump starter and air compressor. And then the first drawer is all my small punches and, uh, center punch. Second drawer is bigger, more large punches. Last drawer is all my chisels. And a, mis a misplaced punch that I now just found. <laughs> uh, next drawer down is all my files. Now, a lot of these tools I get at like uh, flea markets and stuff like that. So this is a... Uh, um, and my grandfather gave me a lot of stuff. My other pap gave me a lot of stuff. So this is my file drawer. <laughs> I guess I have every single file I ever needed. So uh, next drawer down is uh, plumbing tools and pipe wrenches. I have uh, some pipe fittings in here for making drain plugs for some of those MTD trousers that never came with a drain plug. I save all these sort of little small uh, pipe nipples and plugs and make my own so that's easier to drain the oil out of those uh, up next is my rivets and rivet guns also have a stapler in there but I hardly ever use it but got miscellaneous rivets stored in this box here just different sizes next door is all my zip ties I got a lot of them but you need all different sizes when you're doing this stuff uh, the next drawer is pipe taps. These are super old. Uh, I got them from my grandfather. The uh, actual wrench itself is, under, is hanging up because it's too big to fit in, in any of these boxes, but mm, just a small pipe uh, tap and die set over there. Uh, these next two drawers are empty pretty much and I'm just waiting to get some more tools to put into them. And my last drawer here is the uh, all my grease guns and oil filter wrench. And then down below is basically uh, tool bags for taking stuff places. And then moving over to my US, other U.S. General uh, toolbox, this is my most recent toolbox. Uh, this is the 26 inch Series 2 that they sell. Uh, hanging on the side I have all my magnetic parts trays. And then up top here we have couple a light here a magnet on a stick up top uh i mainly run dewalt for impacts so this is like a little small impact driver and then the big uh half inch impact and then i go dewalt drill there and then i have a brush this one over on the bench um ratchet strap for when you're doing tires if you ever have tires that won't uh the bead won't go back on you can put a ratchet strap around it and tighten them up and it helps seat the bead. Um, got my uh, DeWalt chargers up here, more lights and magnets and stuff like that up top here. Uh, coming down to the first drawer, we have my quarter inch ratchets and extensions. Another thing I like about this toolbox is you can see how far out the drawer comes from it. So it's a deep toolbox, which I like. Uh, out of all my r ratchets I use, I probably, use the core ring set the most it's just the most convenient for me uh i have a little bit of everything in this drawer i got some this is pittsburgh and uh, this is a snap-on little quarter inch snap-on i found at the flea market it was just rebuilt so it's working good i've been using that a lot uh this is actually a really good ratchet here it's a real thin pro low profile ratchet it's made by husky if you can there we go uh these are real handy too this is just these are just uh harbor freight but if you ever have a nut that you can't get on by hand, but a rash, it doesn't work. You can get in there with this and put it on there. It works really good because it's really uh, fine teeth. Kind of hard to spin it with one hand, but you get the idea. 
Um, got my quarter inch nut driver here and some flex heads. Again, it's mostly Pittsburgh professional and stuff like that, but I've had no problems with them I'm using them just almost on a daily basis, and I've never really had a problem with them. Uh, that's about it in that drawer. I got some cheaper ratchets sitting up here for ones I don't really care if I have to put a lot of load on them, I can break them, and I really wouldn't worry about it. Um, moving on to the second drawer, is my 3 8 ratchets and extensions. Uh, again, mostly Harbor Freight, but like I just I just picked this up recently. It's the Harbor Freight Professional or Pittsburgh Professional uh, 3 8 long handle flex head. I haven't really had a chance to use it all that much, but I figured it would come in handy for something. Uh, this is probably my most used 3 8 ratchet. It's a uh, Proto uh, 5249 Proto. It's been an overall good ratchet. I've never really had any issues with it. Uh, I'm slowly, I'd like to upgrade and get some better ratchets, like some snap ons or Matcos or something like that. Just to, something with a lifetime warranty. I mean, I know Harbor Freight has a lifetime warranty, but they're not the best quality. But like I said, I've had, that's usually most of what I use right now, and I've had no problems with them yet. Uh, going into the third drawer, we have uh, all my half inch ratchets and extensions. Again, it's some, there's some SNK in here, some Pittsburgh, and there's actually a snap-on uh, extension in here somewhere. And I'm not really sure where it went. There's a couple, got a couple of flex heads and uh, universal joints back in the corner there. But that's my half inch. Of course, the drawer won't close now. That's what happens when you have that this many tools. Uh, next door down is all my screwdriver bits. So, I got a little mixture of brands in here. I mostly have DeWalt, or at least that's what I use the most of, just because I like their impact rated duty. Or, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, uh, got some a Cobalt set here. These back in here are just miscellaneous bits that I've collected over the years, I guess, that you get in sets of stuff. And you just need, want one that's disposable. You got a whole bunch of them back there. And then I got the, this is the, uh, I believe it's a Nico brand off Amazon. It's kind of like the Harbor Freight one, but it was getting better reviews. Harbor Freight is the master uh, screwdriver master kit, I guess is what they call it. Then back here I have some uh, six inch long bits and then four inch long ones here. So that's that drawer. Next drawer is drill bits. This isn't, I haven't bought so many drill bits yet. I'm working on upgrading. I like the Milwaukee brand the best. I've used DeWalt in the past, but I've noticed that their qualities really went downhill for as far as drilling steel goes, which is what I do the most of. I could probably drill maybe two holes with a drill, DeWalt drill and then they're dull. And I've had these Milwaukee uh, impact rated ones for a couple of months now and they're still working good. I have yet to break one too, so those are pretty good uh, if you're looking for a uh, drill bit set. I highly recommend them. Then the uh, next drawer here is a bunch of uh, screwdriver Torx bit sockets. There we go. Uh, for instance, like these are Allen Allen head uh, long reach bits. Uh, there's metric or uh, yeah metric in here, and these are standard. These actually I got if you, these I got off eBay, and I've used them on my impact wrench and stuff like that, and they have held up really well. So, um, back in here is have miscellaneous ones. These are uh, Torx, Allen heads, short or stubby, I guess. These are like Phillips and flathead mix and a mixture of different other bits. Uh, more short Torx bits with the other style Torx. And then in this drawer is the long reach Torx that I use. This set I've used the most, but and I have, like I said, I use them on my impact wrench, and I, I have yet to snap one. And just for being eBay quality, it's they held up really good, and the case is super nice too. So the next drawer is all my uh, T-handled wrenches and Allen wrenches. Uh, I have the, these are all my uh, Allen head uh, standard. Then the metric Allen head standard in the back there. I got all my different sets of Allen wrenches. Like and then these are all Torx T-handled wrenches. Uh, they're made by uh, 
this back set is made by Valley. I believe, yeah, Valley. And they, I believe I got them off Amazon, but they work really well. I, like I said, I've yet to break any of them. Uh, next drawer is my wrench drawer for miscellaneous wrenches that I have and stuff. So I got like a small ignition wrenches here in this little case. I got miscellaneous stubbies back there. That's an impact set that I don't, uh, sockets that I don't use all that often. Uh, more uh, st stubbies I use the most of. And then these are real thin, thin wrenches for if you ever worked on the Kohler commands with the uh, fuel solenoids. Uh, you need a real thin wrench to get in there, and these were at a uh, local flea market. I believe they're these are Cornwell. So there's a couple of duplicates in here, but I mainly use the Cornwell. This one here, it's the nine sixteenths and a half inch. So that's the one I use the most of. And then I have my Milwaukee uh, battery operated ratchet, which I'm definitely considering switching to Milwaukee. Uh, my, all my tools are in Milwaukee because I really like their quality compared to the Walt. But for now, the all it works for what I'm doing. And then the second, uh, down to the bottom uh, cabinet, we got first drawers of all my nut drivers over here in the corner. These are just Harbor Freight, but for little projects, they work fine. Uh, I got some crash ones on the back there, but it's not a complete set. Uh, I've got a uh, Tecton impact screwdriver. Uh, these I just picked up the other day actually off Amazon they're made by uh, also tools they're the Torx screwdrivers uh, these are this is basically my Torx and specialty screwdriver drawer and then I got some picks up in here like the big hose picks and stuff like that I've never really had to use these big ones yet for anything but it was a set so I figured they'd come in handy if I ever have to use them and then the next drawer is my vice grips I had bought the, uh, I believe they're on Amazon still, the uh, vice grip set with the uh, storage tray. And the problem was that this the storage tray was way bigger and it was just, it was actually bigger than it needed to be. They had so much leftover material that there was no use for it. So what I did is I cut the, took all the, rat, the uh, vice grips out of it and then I put on the bandsaw and cut the uh, uh, holder down to the size that it would fit in the drawer and then did that so that I could fit more in this drawer uh, and then I have just like a, some older vice grips and some Harbor Freight ones and just a whole bunch of them in here these actually I just got for Christmas these are uh, made by engineer and these are really really good uh, vice grips they're they have, I don't know if you can see there they have a little uh, holder or uh, teeth in the top there that is made for biting onto the ends of screws and uh, these are really, really good vice grips. I highly recommend them. So in the uh, next door down is my uh, adjustable wrenches and channel locks. Um, yeah, like I said, I got multiple of each tool and I don't really need them. But never know and you might need two or three of each size. So, And they were cheap or free, so I collect them. <laughs> so uh, I mostly, as far as channel locks go, I run the channel lock brand. Actually, that's why I run most of the leaf for all my pliers because they're made in the USA, and I've really I've had good luck with them. Uh, like I got from the I'm not even really sure what size that is, but it's a super big channel log all the way down to the ones that fit in the palm of your hand. So that's pretty. I've never seen another one of these. I've seen I saw one of them this pair at the uh, flea market at a local steam show that I go to. You have to check my. Uh, video out on on my channel i got videos of that and uh found these on at one of the tool vendors and i think i paid like five bucks for those uh next door down this door is pretty much empty this is going to be a uh easy outs and left-handed drill bits but right now i have a couple of easy outs over here for uh getting stuck i believe they're for nuts i've used them on a couple different applications and I've, they've worked really well for me and then this is a uh i don't know if you ever it's almost like a rivet tool but it's called a nut zert tool uh you can insert nuts or uh these inserts into the uh in sheet metal or really any metal and then you can put bolts through it so it's like these little threaded inserts you can put into sheet metal and 
Uh, what I found that I use this the most for is if you replace a tree, uh, seat on your garden trader and uh, you don't have the, the holes don't line up, you can drill the correct holes in the bottom of the seat and put those inserts in and then you can pull it right up to the trader. I've done that multiple times and I have yet to have one come back. So next drawer is the, all my tap and die or the uh, bad day drawers, I call it. Uh, I got a Tekken metric set there and then these are just miscellaneous SAE versions. Uh, I have, I want to get a good set of SAE guys. I haven't done it yet. And then I got all my uh, tap sockets down there. Next drawer is all my air tools. I don't have a very big compressor, so this drawer hardly is ever open. Just, I haven't upgraded to a bigger compressor yet, but for now, these are what I got of air tools. These are, I never really paid, bought any of these. They were, these were given to me by, by my grandfather. So that's that. Next door down is all my uh, pullers. Uh, a, a good brand of puller that I found is made by OTC. It's on, you can find them on Amazon uh, for like these steering wheel pullers and uh, harmonic ba balancer pullers. I actually use these for pulling wheels off of tractors. You can like thread bolts through each one of these slots and then put them through the wheels, uh, the hole in the wheel. And uh, he hit them up and the thing will just pull them right off of there. And then I got miscellaneous bolts there for different sizes for when I'm pulling stuff off. And then the last drawer in this toolbox is my, I have my angle grinder, an old drill, which I don't really know why it's in this toolbox, but, and then a, a cylinder leak down tester also by OTC. It's a very good, uh, very accurate leak down tester. So that's this toolbox. We'll move on to the next one. So the third toolbox is a, I'm not, if it, it, not 100% sure what brand this toolbox is. Actually, I don't even think it's a toolbox. It's a, uh, I believe it was used in a hardware store for uh, not in bolt storage. So it has dividers in it, or it used to at least. But I found it really good for holding uh, all my sockets and stuff. Um, so up on top, we have my JC or JNC 770 by Jump and Carry. Uh, I had pretty good luck with this jump starter. It's I, it's very uh, heavy duty. It's actually what a lot of automotive dealers use and stuff like that. But I just mainly start garden tires with it. Uh, it works really well. I had to have it sent in for warranty at once because the battery started leaking. And uh, technically it, that wasn't covered under warranty, but they covered it for me. Uh, so they repaired it and then sent it back out to me. So all that was, I can't recommend this company enough. Actually, I got this on eBay, but um, first drawer here is all my quarter inch sockets, and all I made these holders with out of a piece of uh, quarter inch plywood and then uh, dowel rods. So, I mean, I can shake the drawer around and they just stay there. So I've had good luck. I'm actually going to re be redoing this because this takes up too much space in the drawer, and there's a lot of other sockets that I have that I need to fit in here. So I found some other holders. So when I do the uh make a transition to the other holders that i bought i'll make an update video showing how they're how they work and so far but i run the uh, craftsman um sockets mostly uh i've like i said i've used these on my the chrome you're not supposed to but i used them on my impact wrench and never had one break or i guess explode but just be careful if you're using them on your impact wrench uh Moving down, I have my 3 8 sockets. This one is didn't turn out as good. You can see some of the sockets lean on there just because these are, this is a, uh, I believe, half inch plywood, and I just used drywall screws of different sorts to kind of hold them on there and stuff. But again, this drawer is going to be getting redone because I don't like how it turn, turned out. But for now, it works. But I got uh, standard room metric and, and a uh, deep and shallow as well as in uh, six and 12 point sockets uh so this is a this is a one of the bigger this i think was like a 240 piece socket set that craftsman used to sell back in the day when i actually now i think about it i think it was probably i got this this set's about five years old or so and uh hardest part was is they sent it, it was just all the sockets were in one giant bag <laughs> so you had to sort them yourself so that took, took a while but uh 
got them all sorted and I mean like I said I use on impact wrenches and stuff and they work pretty good so the next drawer is my deep uh, deep well sockets these are all half inch drive uh, again 6 and 12 point so that's that drawer so that's the end of that toolbox but I couldn't fit the, sh the uh, shallow half inch sockets or my impact rated sockets so I found this craftsman two drawer toolbox that had the it was supposed to be the middle uh section of uh entire set but it was on sale because the other set was busted so i got this and this this houses all of my uh short half inch drive uh, wrenches again in six and twelve point and then this paper that that was the list of the saga so that's how i had to go through it and figure out if i had everything or not then the, down here is all of my uh, impact sockets. I mainly use six point. I don't the twelve point. I haven't had much luck with, so I just got rid of all that stuff and kept the six point. Uh, as far as the deep deep well sockets, these are all uh, Harbor Freight, and I've had these for about ten years, and I've used them in ways you're not supposed to. Like for instance, you can see the bottom of this is looks like it's mushroomed out. I've used it as like a punch, <laughs> and uh, it's they've held up really well i mean i've hammered on these things i've used my air impact my big half inch impact and not never stripped a bolt out or broken one yet so then the short uh sockets are made by tecton again they're on amazon but they're really high quality for the price you pay um so i got both uh standard and metric in this drawer and uh, that's that drawer. So this is onto the lower toolbox. This is a uh, Kennedy toolbox. It was my grandfather's, and I was lucky enough to inherit it. Uh, first drawer here is a uh, my screwdriver drawer, mainly Phillips and flathead. Uh, again, I run Craftsman. I've never had a problem with with them. These are actually really good screwdrivers. These are the Craftsman Professional Diamond Tip. They're real good for uh, not stripping out bolts because the diamond tip almost feels like sandpaper. So I've had real good luck with these. Get them on Amazon still. And then this, these are just the standard, like you see them all over the place, Craftsman, Lowe's, Home Depot, all that kind of stuff. Again, they're decent screwdrivers. I've welded on them and stuff like that, used them as punches, and they've held up pretty good. And then as far as anything else that's in here, these are just like cheap little screwdrivers that you use for all different kinds of things. Next drawer is all of my pliers, or at least the first drawer of pliers. Uh, I got a little bit of an assortment, but mainly I use uh, channel lock pliers, because like I said, with the channel locks, they're made in the, uh, the USA. Um, but like I said, I got some all metal, Neil knows these are, actually, these don't even have a brand on. So there's some Craftsman in here. There's a Cobalt set. Um, these are Harbor Freight, but these are actually the oldest pair of pliers I have, and they still work. They're probably going on, oh, I got to say 11 or 12 years now, and they still work like they're supposed to. Um, got my, also, these are also good pliers. These are made by Erwin Vice Grip. Uh, 45 degree needle nose. Uh, wire stripper again harbor freight but it works these are really cool these are uh vice grip uh hose uh hose pinch pliers so when i work on a snowblower or trad or whatever i can pinch the fuel line off and keep the gas from coming out so that works really well um yeah like i said the i've used the plastic ones before but i've had more luck with these they're just they're a little bit they get a little bit tighter but yet they don't uh damage the um hose in any way because of the way that they're beveled i guess uh more channel lock pliers these they don't even make these anymore but these are my go-to as far as removing uh, hose uh hose clamps the spring load hose clamps on tratters and stuff these are my go-to because they have such uh, wide uh, jaws on but these i got at the Steam show as well, and uh, they worked out really well. 
So the next drawer is uh, more more pliers or specialty pliers. Uh, I've got little miniature pliers. I've got uh, long long range needle nose in the uh, 45 degree and or 90 degree and uh, straight. I don't really know what you call these pliers, but I saw them and I figured they'd come in handy, and they really have come in handy. I use them quite a bit for getting in tight and weird spaces. It's because of that weird angle. Uh, these are engineer pliers, kind of like those vice grips I showed you, but they have the uh, teeth that run the opposite way of the other teeth in the uh, jaw. So whenever you you can grip on the end of a screw, you can see it leaves a little space in there. And I've used these to get out broken screws before, and I was really impressed with them. They're, uh, I believe they're on Amazon. That's where I got them. But yeah, those are that's that. These are Harbor Freight uh, hose pliers. They work pretty good. I've ha haven't had much, any bad things to say about them. Um, then these cheap hose pinch pliers. They work all right, but they don't. They're not as good as the other side I showed you. So the next drawer is probably my most used drawer. Uh, it'd be the hammer drawer. <laughs> Or to beat the crap out of anything drawer. Uh, just all different brands. No, there's really no order. Uh, these are Harbor Freight. They come in like a five. It's like a set of five of them, different sizes. And I weld with these things. They're just fiberglass, but I've yet to break one. Like I, when I say I weld on stuff, I all all the power I can give it, I put on this hammer, and it hasn't broken, hasn't fractured or anything. Uh, got the stubby here and I have a, the claw hammer and the uh, ball peen so the next drawer after the hammers is uh, my wire wheels I keep wire wheels in here and then uh, wire brushes on this side I keep uh, this is a this is a good trick if you're trying to install uh, an oil seal on the crankshaft and you don't want to take the oil pan off you can use this and drive the oil seal in there you just gotta be careful with it because you don't want to uh, roll the seal the edge of the, uh, edge of the seal over or else it will start leaking but anyways this uh, this is a battery uh, battery cable uh, terminal crimper so I've used it quite a bit and it's been a good tool uh, these are oil filter pliers made by channel lock they come in two different sizes uh, again, when you have those stubborn oil floors, it won't come off. You can just branch on with these things, and they come off pretty good. Uh, there's also pry bars in here, uh, strap wrench, also another oil filter wrench over there. So, moving on to the next drawer, this is my uh, I got torque wrenches in here. I got to upgrade because, as you can see, I just have Pittsburgh, but I want to upgrade to a better brand. Uh, a couple of compression testers. Uh, these are this is the bridge and strat and the flywheel tool to remove the uh clutch on a flywheel for the older mowers and then a slide hammer in the last drawer i have some uh power drills if you need the drill start something or you just want to beat the crap out of a drill i have a couple of these in here and then my uh, crankshaft straightener for uh, push mower engines if you hit something bend the crankshaft you can stick this the motor on this and then straighten it out so that's coming real handy. So that's the end of this this part of the toolbox tour. So uh, let me get switch the camera off and I'll move on to the next uh, couple toolboxes. All right, so this is over on the other bench I have. This is a Stanley toolbox. This is top part is very much a catch-all for miscellaneous things, tire tools and. Uh, I think there's some belt sleeves and stuff in there. But the first drawer is for t is my tire repair drawer. I've got uh, tire plugs, valve stems, the uh, valve cores and valve core, core removal tools. So that's that drawer. Second drawer is measurement tools. It's pretty empty right now because I'm slowly upgrading to better tools. Um, but I got uh, dial, a dial caliper in there. Uh, it's just a Pittsburgh, but it's a digital, so I found it works pretty good. Kind of hard to see it. Must be it's about dead. 
This goes to show you how much I use that. <laughs> uh, these are small engine rebuild tools that I have for rebuilding engines. I got a micrometer, actually two micrometers in there. Uh, valve lapping compound and lappers and a piston ring uh, expander. And then the last drawer, I have a valve seat cutter. That's actually a lifesaver. If you ever do valves uh, or put new valves in, uh, I recommend cutting the, uh, the face of the seat and then that will ensure that you have a good uh, valve seal and it won't cause you to lose any power or anything if you don't if you don't do you run the risk of uh losing compression out the valves because they'll leak so i opted to buy this kit um it's worked pretty good and then uh, i got engine hones in here and more valve spring compressors and stuff and then this toolbox here i'm not really sure what the brand is it's kind of, you can see it's been painted over a couple of times uh got it from my grandfather but anyways uh up in the top here we I have lights and uh, miscellaneous things for bolts, parts, this, things I want to keep track of. I keep up in here. I got a small punch set there, all my funnels. I put all of them into a mason jar so that they drain. Uh, coffee cup, I keep that out here for dra draining some gas, the gas out of a carburetor to check to see if, if the gas is bad or not. Uh, respirator, notepad for taking notes on stuff. Some other miscellaneous stuff. This is a um, tachometer made by Raisin Stratton. You sit it on the push mower engine and it, the vibration tells you what your the engine's running at. That come, comes in handy. I got a, uh, this is a flywheel clutch removal tool for an impact. So that other tool I showed you doesn't really get used all that much. Uh, micro, micro drill bits and a piston ring compressor. That's a super old tool, but it still works. And scissors, just a bunch of, a little bit of everything on the top of this one. Uh, in the first drawer, I keep all my detail brushes or and little miniature wire brushes for get clean, uh, like electrical connections and stuff like that, or cleaning inside small areas. I keep all these in here, and then over here is my scrapers. I got for if you ever clean on the mower deck, I recommend the grass buster. I got two of them in here, but it's a really good, it's just basically like a putty, a putty knife, but it works, it has a nice ha handle on it for when you're doing this a lot. And then a couple of razor blade scrapers and gas scrapers and stuff. Uh, next drawer is my electrical connector drawer and, well, test leads and stuff, I mean. Uh, got a couple of these spark testers laying around. Uh, battery terminal, this is a... Uh, battery desulfator I don't really know if it works or not I just it was cheap enough I figured I'd give it a shot to uh, bring old batteries back to life it works sometimes but it, I hardly ever use it anymore this is my other part of my electrical stuff this is uh, multimeters and digital probes uh, battery testers and test lights more spark testers uh, this is a sn old snap-on uh, test light still works. This is a I found this on Amazon. It's really it's really a no name brand, but uh, it's digital, so it, it tells it tells you anything from uh, three volts all the way up to forty eight volts. Uh, I also like the fact that it has a coiled uh, wire, so it doesn't get tangled up very easily. Uh, this is a Topton uh, battery tester, digital. Uh, it actually works really well. It has a engine start tester and an alternator tester on it uh it's made more for cars but it works for the small engine repair too so i use that quite a bit and then i have, I have a blue point digital probe here it's a really old probe but it still works for what i need it for um, this is a klein tools uh mm 300 this is a pretty good multimeter i got a couple different leads for it i got the regular probe leads and then the alligator clamp bleeds and then these are just that's just the cheap harbor freight and then an older uh uh older style multimeter for if you need to test something that you can't really get digital to work very well i use this and then down below this is the second part of that toolbox this and i use mainly for uh the top drawer i'll show in another video that's parts second drawer is all of my manuals 
for tools and all my lawn equipment, my restored tractors and stuff. And, uh, more manuals down below here. All different kinds of stuff. And then again, down below is just uh, a bunch of uh, junk, mostly. Uh, old power tools, uh, sawzalls, that kind of stuff. So coming back up here, this is a canopy box. It's actually a machinist box, but uh, I use it for small engine tools and small things. In the top, I keep my gloves and some ratchet straps, uh, miscellaneous things in the back there, uh, gloves. First drawer here is uh, pens, pencils, and if, this is actually a good trick if you ever need to get a really heavy spring off. Put wrap this around, or actually more or less put the spring on, not off. Uh, you put this around the spring, then you can grab onto this, or with a pair of vice grips or uh, put gloves on or something, I guess, and you can pull it on and put the spring on, and you can just cut this off and not have to try and get a pair of pliers stuck or something like that. And I've used this multiple times, and it works great. All it is is a piece of a coat hanger, but you can use heavy gauge wire and, uh, I yeah, I guess heavy gauge wire. I wouldn't use anything thinner than like mechanics wire because that would you'd be around the risk of it snapping. Uh, got some spare couple spare batteries for my multimeters. This is a spark thread or a spark plug thread uh, tap. I've had to use that a couple of times. It works pretty good. Uh, for this is probably one of my favorite tools that I have. Uh, this is uh, called the Z Bender. For uh, if you ever take a throttle cable off of a tractor or at the end of a throttle cable breaks and you need to make that little Z in it, this is what this tool does. You basically stick the wire in there, bend it 90 degrees, turn the tool, stick it the other end of the wire into the little groove there. Okay, right, there we go. Uh, bend it 90 degrees again, take it off, and you got a Z bend. Uh, spark plug gap tool. Probably another one of my favorite tools. I that my friend came up with all this is is an old screwdriver handle and this is the inside of a windshield wiper both of the windshield wiper blades i mean uh what this is used for i don't know if i have a let's see if i have a plug over here or something i can show you guys so one of these with all this is for on the back of an ignition switch you have all your wires going into it and you want to say the wire broke you want to put a new end on it the the ends are stuck in there so you take this tool, you can stick it in, in between the plastic and the terminal, bend that tab back, and then you can pull the wire out. And then you can also use this to bend the tab back up and stick the wire back in and it locks it in place. So this, this is a simple tool, it's just glued together and it works really well. So I keep that in there. Um, another tool that comes in handy is a, uh, this is a screw. I, I guess it's called a screw holder. I don't really know any other name for it. Uh, you, for flat hand Phillips, you, so you can start a real small uh, screw, like a machine screw. You, it locks the screw on the end of it, and you can use it like a pen or a pencil and get it into the hole you need to get into. That comes in handy. Uh, for, a lot of people know what this is. This is the, the Kumsa needle and seat tool. You can pull the seat out. See, there's one stuck on there. Uh, you can pull the end of the, the seat out of the carburetor. And stick new one on this end here and push it into the carburetor and you're good to go. Come, I use this quite a bit. Uh, next drawer is my carburetor rebuild tools uh, and filler gauges. What I find comes in handy are these torch kit cleaners uh, for cleaning out the jets on carburetors or if you get a carburetor in that needs you can't adjust it and it's not getting enough gas you can use these to kind of file the jets a little to get give it more gas. Uh, you just gotta be really careful doing that or else be, because if you go too big it won't run right either so i got a couple of couple of those in there and some filler gauges this side here is uh on the most of the newer uh two cycle equipment the uh adjustment screws on those are uh special you use special screwdrivers a lot of these are for so they get, that was a spline this is they call it a it's also another spline uh, what is this one? Stage or single D is what they call this one. 
kind of weird looking but and then these little pieces of metal here are made for uh adjusting the needle on your uh two lego carburetor so you got all your part numbers listed on the thing or on this tool this is for a wall any of those two cycle wall broke carburetors and so if you see your mall number on there you run this across the body of the carburetor and your needle has to touch the edge of this just slightly and that will make sure your adjustment's correct uh, next we're down is uh right small little razor blades for scraping gaskets and then uh forceps these come in handy for uh getting in tight spots with uh for wires or uh what I use it most for is uh, replacing the fuel line on two-cycle equipment because you have to get inside the tank to pull the um, all the uh, fuel line out to get a new um, fill filter and stuff in there. So I find these come in handy. Uh, this is just a weird little tool that I found in my grandparents' garage. It's a screw jar with a little baby uh, ball beam hammer on the back side, so it just sits in this drawer. And little, that's a little bit miniature screwdriver for tuning carburetors as well uh next we're down is all my ra razor blade knives pretty self-explanatory over here i keep some of my two cycle spark plug wrenches and then all my little picks that i use for carburetor work and stuff like that they will come in handy uh so these are my snap ring pliers I'm going to get a different set of these eventually, but these are actually really good. They're uh, made by Channel Lock as well, but I found that I, I had a set that was made by Irwin, and uh, you would remove the the end of the plier would come off, and they often don't work for heavy-duty uh, snap rings. Well, I found this set here. Would you see it'll, uh, it's, it'll flip to whatever snap, type of snap ring you're using, either it's uh, internal or external, and then it has all these little... Uh, all little ends and the stuff that you can put into it so that, i found that this set has worked really well for me and then the last door in this one is all my air chucks uh tire pressure gauges and uh air blowers that kind of stuff so we'll move on to the other bench and i'll show you the other toolboxes i have so this is my other kennedy toolbox it, it's the uh other half of that machinist toolbox um, first door is a bunch of drill bits for the drill press. You can see that drill press in my other video. I talk about it. Second drawer is pretty much is empty at the moment. I'm going to put hole saws in it. Uh, bottom drawer here is all my C-clamps and welding clamps. My grandfather was a welder, so a lot of these came from him. Bottom, again, is all battery-powered tools that don't really get used anymore, but if you need them, they're there. Uh... This small little portable toolbox in here is a, uh, I use that. It holds all of my uh, old sockets before I replaced them. Uh, I kept them, so if you ever need to modify a socket or grind a socket down the fit, that's basically what I kept them for. Uh, just a bunch of junk on top of this other half of the Stanley toolbox here. Uh, I keep my die grinder, grinding wheels, and sanding disc in here. And for bigger discs down here. I believe I showed this toolbox in the other video, but... Let's do it again. And the bottom is uh, paint tools, like uh, paint thinner and carburetor cleaner overstock and stuff. Um, that's pretty much it. Other than that, guys, I appreciate you watching. I'll make a third video here shortly of uh, all my part storage and how I store all my stuff. But uh, I, uh, <laughs> I walked right past them. All the wrenches. <laughs> um bottom row here is all metric uh mainly craftsman in pittsburgh but again i want to get some snap on because i've heard nothing but good about them uh up next one these are all gear wrench ratcheting wrenches both in standard and metric and then all my standard are up top uh these are just a miscellaneous set mostly mostly craftsman in pittsburgh but i got a couple of oddballs in there too so um but yeah other than that guys i appreciate everybody watching uh Watch out for my uh, parts video coming out probably, I'm going to say maybe two weeks or so. I'll get that made and put out for you guys. So, uh, again, I want to wish everybody a uh, happy new year. Now we're already past that. It's the fourth day. <laughs>
But uh, thanks everybody for watching and uh, please subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next one.